Hey guys, since we've managed to secure two review samples of RTX 4080, including Founders Edition directly from NVIDIA, we decided to make a review comparing them head to head for those who may be interested to pick one of them up. At the same time, they should give you an indication of overall performance and compared to the last gen 3080 and the current king of GPU performance, the RTX 4090. And spoiler alert, one of these RTX 4080s is actually slightly better than the other. Let's get right into it. Before we get into the testing results, here is our Ryzen 7 7700X testbench. I'll first want to start with the power targets between the Founders Edition and the Tough Gaming cards. For this, we ran Firestrike Ultra on loop and found that both of them kept switching back and forth. But ultimately, Tough Gaming card hit a peak of 317 watts, while FE card peaked at just below 314 watts. So they're pretty even in this regard. When it comes to cooling and fan speeds, we have Tough Gaming actually running both fans considerably faster than the Founders Edition during this test. What is interesting, on the Founders Edition, fans are running at different speeds. Fan 1 is about 100 RPM faster than Fan 2 when speeds are stabilized. And Tough Gaming fans are around 155 RPM faster than the fastest fan on the FE card. You'd think that 10% speed difference would make it much louder, but that is not the case. In our measurements, the sound difference is only 0.4 dBA, and both these cards stayed below 38 dBA while under load, which is pretty quiet. The keen-eyed among you probably already spotted that we only show two fans on the Tough Gaming card, even though it has three. It's because speeds are reporting from the middle fan as one measurement and flanking fans together as the other measurement. Due to more and faster fans, the Tough Gaming card actually on average performs 2 degrees cooler than the Founders Edition card. This is considering that our room's ambient temperature is 26 degrees Celsius. When we look at the frequency, the Asus card is running slightly faster than the NVIDIA counterpart. The average difference is around 53 MHz, which is just short of 2%. I suspect that's where the Tough Gaming OC comes in. So when it comes to power targets, these cards are comparable, but Tough Gaming so far has slight thermal advantage. To verify this, we ran both these cards tuned to the same 40 dBA noise target and found almost the same result. The temperature delta is 2.5 degrees Celsius, which is around 3.8%, and the frequency is about 2% faster on the Tough Gaming card. So with this in mind, how does that transfer in the real world performance? Let's do some game benchmarks starting with Shadow of a Tomb Raider at 1440p. Here we see Tough Card leading by 1.8% on average FPS and losing by just shy of half a percent on the 1%. Hours. If we look at the 4090, it is leading the pack by only 16.5% while having 29% higher MSRP from the Founders Edition. When we increase the resolution to 4K, the difference between 4080s stays roughly the same at 1.6% lead from the Asus card. In this example, RTX 4090 is 35% faster, which is similar difference that we have from the 3080 to 4080. In Horizon Zero Dawn at 1440p, there is a similar difference between Tough and FE cards, but we're most likely limited by the CPU above that, so we're not going to spend much time here. At the 4K, there is a whole 1% improvement from the Founders Edition to the Tough Gaming card, and just shy of 30% improvement from the RTX 4090. Moving forward, we'll run things only in 4K. But this is where I feel these cards are supposed to be used. In Overwatch 2, we have one of the biggest differences of 2.8% lead from the Tough Gaming card over the Founders Edition, and only 4.2% improvement by going up to RTX 4090. Next, we have some more modern titles with ray tracing enabled. Here in F122, at maxed out settings, we have much lower frame rates, and that extra speed from the Tough Gaming card allows for 3.1% improvement over the FE, while being 34% slower than the RTX 4090. This performance scaling is very close to the price scaling. While keeping the same settings, we enabled DLSS to performance mode and also turned on frame generation on the 4000 series cards. And here we yet again have 2% improved average FPS on a tough gaming card, while RTX 4090 is running 25% faster. In Cyberpunk 2077, we also maxed out all the settings and pushed ray tracing to what they call cycle mode. And here these cards are properly punished. With these settings, it's not really a pleasant experience on either one of these cards. With this in mind, Asus card is 4.1% faster than the Founders Edition and RTX 4090 is leading the pack with 36.5% more FPS on average. With the full DLSS suite of features enabled, the game becomes playable again and this is the first time Founders Edition card is actually performing better than a tough gaming. It had 3.4% lead on average FPS and 1.2% on the 1% RTX 4090 is 31.2% faster than a 4080 FE here. Now let's do a quick fire round of productivity and summarize all of these results. Feel free to pause and check out the actual graphs as we zoom them by. 
The long story short here is that Tough Gaming is between 0.8 and 1.4% faster than the Founders Edition card, which is somewhat in line with the previous tests we did. After doing all of these tests, it becomes quite apparent that there is no funny business happening here with the actual GPU chips themselves, and both cards perform really closely. Since Tough Gaming card is more expensive than the Founders Edition card from the Nvidia, it is slightly faster in all but one test, which was Cyberpunk 2077 at max tower settings with DLSS and frame generation turned on. Other than that, you can expect a few percent better performance at almost identical noise levels. The Asus card is also bigger, so here is that. Overall, if that's worth it or not is very, well, tough choice. When it comes to RTX 4080 value, if compared to 4090, this gets rather interesting. We'll use the two Founders Edition cards for comparison as both their pricing is known. So based on MSRP of 1200 USD for the 4080 FE and 1600 USD for the 4090 FE, the difference is around 28.5%. And as you can see in this table, in most of these tests, scaling of performance per dollar lines up. In fact, you get more performance per dollar from the 4090, which makes 4080 pretty expensive card. I believe at the current time with 1200 USD price tag, this card, while still performing okay, is more of a nudge for people to get 4090, which is really expensive. My ultimate recommendation for now is to hold off unless you really need NVIDIA specific features. In under a month, AMD will have their next generation Radeon cards out and this will likely shake things up. If on the other hand, 4080 price were to drop to under 1000 USD, then it would actually be a better value per dollar than the 4090, which I suspect may happen after the AMD launch. We shall have to wait and see. If you want to check out any of the items covered in the video, the links are in the description below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.